Oh, Whoa. That's tennis. Come on. He served it up. Happy nice good morning. Job. Happy good morning, you guys. Hey, as you notice, my beautiful wife not joining us today. So pray for my wife. She's home a little, little, little under the weather. Yeah, so anyway. She didn't want to come. She would have to run off set every five seconds and cough and then run back. And then, so anyway, she said, I'm going to stay good. home. Yeah. Praying for Lori. But yes, thank you. Thank you. Happy May to everyone. It's oh, crazy. Man, we're already here. Oh, my gosh. We have such a big show for you today. A lot of national days. And then we have a huge surprise coming up at the end of the show. Come on. Stay tuned. It's a big week. Look at that. Advanced copy I got there, signed and autographed, everything. Beautiful, uh -oh. beautiful. We got a devotional. <laughs> All right. Our national days for this week. We wanted to start off with a fun one, and I asked Pastor James about this. We'll see what he has to say now, but the first one is Tuesday, May <laughs> 3rd, is Teacher Appreciation Day. And before we ask Pastor about his teachers and his appreciation for them, I have a really special one. In high school, I had a vocal teacher by the name of Jim Purcell. He was actually Jim Purcell Sr. His son was also a teacher, but uh, he passed back about 2012. Amazing, amazing man. He did just all, he was, at, he was at Manatee High School down in Bradenton, Florida forever. I think he was there for 40 years or so teaching vocal. And um, he also was music minister at churches and things like that, but amazing man. And uh, he actually helped me through high school kind of as a father figure. Um, I was quite rebellious and he would rein me in quite a bit, but did everything he could just to help me you know, get prepared for college. I mean, he had me sing national anthem at football games. He gave me um, all kinds of opportunities out wow. in the community to do voiceover work, to do, um, I mean, I would announce at football games, just all kinds of wild stuff that he did. I'm a junior and senior in high school, and he did all these things just to try to help me develop, you know, my career and my future. And of course, I never did much with my voice after that, but other than I know, that, where's your now. singing career now? Yeah, it's, uh, I left it in high school and college. Once I left college, it was kind of, I went behind the scenes after I'm that. I'm assuming so. he's not alive anymore. No, he's a black not. He and white photo. In, yeah, he passed in 2012, I believe it was. But anyway, so love, love, love that man. And um, all those that he touched, he impacted. Just a great, great man. You know, teachers are really in positions to impact children. Absolutely. We have, uh, you know, Brooke, she's a teacher. Mm -hmm. And they just, she loves it. She looks at it as like a ministry to love on the yeah. kids. And so we love all our teachers. Yeah, and he, Jim was, he was like a father to everybody, to all, the, the, all the courses, everything that he taught. I mean, if you ever go online and research him, you'll see all the things that people blogs, they wrote about him. But amazing, amazing. He was a mighty man of God, too, in the secular world, in the high schools, and uh, took his faith I, into the I high school. I find that even with coaching, you know, helping yeah. kids. Yeah. Teachers are so appreciative. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> of course you say that. Here, but, no story here. <laughs> come on, I asked Pastor, I said, come on, it's Teacher Appreciation Day. Nope. Tell me about your favorite teacher. struggled with teachers. <laughs> He said he had one. Actually, I had a, no. <laughs> I had a gym teacher who would um, get high with us in the back of the football field. That's your teacher That's appreciation my childhood day? friends. Before the Lord, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank but, you for clarifying uh, that. Yeah, can you believe? That's the teachers I came with in the inner city. Oh, my god. They gosh. do drugs with the kids. Great. I'm not going to get up here and lie, ladies and gentlemen. It's a truthful show. And then we're going to do his testimony show pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up in a week or two. But they are in a position to impact, yes. good or bad. Right. But we thank God for the healthy ones. There you go. Thank you. Wednesday, May 4th. Coming up, Orange Juice Day. Whoa. Who doesn't love orange juice? Whoa. I love orange juice. Now that you're a Floridian, a true Floridian, you, love orange you can juice. really Pulp appreciate. or no pulp? That's the question. Oh, so you didn't even know. I did not share anything about today's program no, with Pastor. No, come on. That's what I... Lord's prophetically giving me the show notes. <laughs> oh, look at this. Thumbs up or down. Stop. Our producer, Steven, developed this. He thought this would be a fun little game for us today. He wants to know thumbs up or thumbs down on these different orange juice features. So our first one. You know one, I'm great at games. Our first one. Yeah, you, you were great last week. Our first one happens to be, what do you say? Thumbs up or thumbs down Whether to we orange like juice it or not? with pulp? Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down I'm if you I'm going to say don't. thumbs down. I'm going to go with the cameraman. We're out. What? No, no. pulp? Nobody wants pulp. No, but do you really want Paul? Wait, I've got one camera. Yeah, it gets Andrew, on your teeth. It gets in your... Andrew doesn't. He's just uncommitted. Andrew, do you know what orange juice is? Okay, he wants Paul. <laughs> I do what orange juice is. Gary, what do you think? Gary said thumbs up. No, you don't. Yeah. No one actually... You get the nasty mustache. It gets in your teeth. And you wonder if it really is Here's the, the question, which I actually don't know the answer to. Is it, So it's natural pulp, right? I would hope. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, like, if we did an orange right now, pulp would be in it. Yes. So that makes you wonder what they have to do to get it out. You haven't done your tangerines? You haven't had tangerine juice off your tangerine um, tree? Really? Yeah. My whole tree rotted out. I lost like 100 oranges. Oh, Too soon. I'm sorry to bring it up. All right, so we have thumbs down. <laughs> thumbs down on the first one. What's our next one? With ice. Orange Woo! juice with ice. 
Can, it, can, can we be honest here? Yeah. I actually like orange juice with like three quarters orange juice, a quarter water, so I'm all ice. If I go on a plane and I want orange juice, it's a little too sweet for me, I like it watered down. So all day ice. No way. I don't, I don't like ice in my orange so juice. So wait, you want nothing but pulp filled glass? Yes. Stop. Come on, when you have breakfast and you've got the little tiny orange juice glass, you don't you don't want ice cubes Ugh. dropping around in that thing. Wow. So, I, all right, so, so you can't Florida agree thing? on anything here. All right, this next one. Orange juice in your cereal. Stop. That is never, nobody's ever done what? that. What? No, oh, oh, oh. Nobody you has ever done Look at our full that. page slate there. You see Tropicana, which by the way, Tropicana, a little backstory for you guys. I grew up in Bradenton, Florida. Of course, you saw my Manatee High School reference there. Tropicana is from Bradenton, Florida. So growing up, everybody, you know, Tropicana, we love oh, it. Yeah. They, they sponsored everything in the community. So they came out with a new add orange juice to this cereal, Tropicana orange okay, juice stop. cereal. This may be one of the worst marketing <laughs> ploys in history. <laughs> what? That's going to be delicious. They built, this is old, right? No, Clearly. this is brand new. It's not brand new. It's coming out. That graphic, it has nothing to do with the African American hand. It looks like it's from the 30s. <laughs> so somebody needs to get fired at Tropicana because this is ridiculous. <laughs> Nobody I, actually in their right mind. Tropicana is so hard for sale. Wait, hold on, hold on. You got to read the bottom line here. Uh, be giving away boxes for free while supplies last starting on May 4th. TropicanaCrunch.com. No. Yes, this week. TropicanaCrunch.com. I'm, I'm getting it. May 4th. I'm trying it. We need to feature it on next week's show. Yeah, let's Thumbs eat up some and thumbs crunch. down next week on some Tropicana we Crunch. It. Let's do it. Get it in the water. Steven, have can it. you hook us up on that? Steven, Give us some Tropicana can we make it Crunch. <laughs> she even makes everything happen. With all that would be incredible to try. I may spit it out bad because <laughs> nobody thinks orange juice for cereal. I, there's probably not going to be pulp in it because that would be gross. Pulp floating in your cereal. I, oh, now we're changing our votes here, yeah. huh? Yeah, now I'm back just not committed. All right, moving right along from our, our riveting uh, discussion about orange juice, Thursday, May 5th. Huge, huge day nationally. It's yes, the National love it. Day of Prayer. Oh my gosh, so many events. Um, we have prayer going on on mostly a lot of the city halls and Capitol right. buildings. So I encourage you guys to get out, pray with people this week. I believe there's a website from the National Day of Prayer yes. that they can go to and be a part of the prayer meetings this week. I yeah, love it. Click on, you can find what's going on in your local community, where to gather, get your church, get a group together. But man, can you imagine the, the power of the entire nation praying? I love it. That's how I, I felt mean, on Easter morning. Like, wow. when so many people are focused to something, it's a powerful thing. Yes. So, join in National Day of Prayer. All right, coming up Saturday, it's like our whole show is National Days today. Wow. National Fitness Day is this Saturday. And um, we've been doing a little fitness thing here at the office, getting together and working out a couple times a week. Just We do like 10 to 15 minutes. And I brought this forward. This is a great article that I got from um, Newsmax Health. But if we can go full page on that, 7,000 steps a day can save your life. They used to tell you, you know, you needed like 10,000. Now they've yeah. lowered it. They say anywhere from like six to 8,000 but it will decrease your mortality rate by up to 50%. Stop. Yes, so if I told you, hey, do you realize your, of course, mortality rate, meaning your life expectancy. You're dead. If you, if you could dead. cut your death rate by half, what would you do to what do you, accomplish you're a fitness that? Guy, do you think that has to do with your heart? It has to do with, number one, your heart, but also the oxygen levels. So when you do anything, 7,000 steps blood? is quite a bit. It actually exercises the entire body, your blood flow and your oxygen flow. It actually benefits every cell of the body. So people think, oh, I've got to lift weights. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. Just walking, that motion but it gets the heart moving. doesn't have to be high intensity, high heart no, rate. Just no, walk. Just 7,000 steps. Do we know steps. how long 7,000 steps is? A couple, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? We did 1,000 steps yesterday on our little fitness thing here at the office. Or not yesterday. Last week at the, at, here at the office, we did 1,000 steps in 13 minutes. Ooh. So okay. multiply that times seven, you're a little over an hour, hour and a half. Ain't nobody walking two hours a day like that. No, but you walk five minutes in the morning to do something. You walk 10 minutes, you walk 15 oh, you minutes mean, at lunch. That's yeah, per yeah, day. Yeah, yeah you don't You'd have to be go proud for of me, walk. for real? Yeah. Three days straight in the gym this week. Good for you. I did. You know what I realized about walking? People would always tell me, like, if you don't do 30 minutes of walk, at least cardio, then it's not really effective. You know what I realized? I was only doing 30 minutes twice a month. And then I woke up one morning this week and I was like, wait a minute. If I do 20 minutes a day, that's going to be far more greater than me trying to hit some. Yeah. It was Isaac. He was playing goalie, and I'm harping on him, and he has to do tryouts for the club team. Gotcha. And he said to me in the car, you know, my son, like, he more, like, feels things. And he said, well, if you don't think I'm good enough for the club team, then I won't try out. And I said, wait a minute, because I thought he had a bad practice. But here's my rule with the kids. I don't care if you win or lose, give up a goal. I want your best effort. Yeah. 
And I said, I don't really care. Are you doing your best? And then I thought about my health. I'll just give it effort. Wow. You know, and so this week, every day, I've been treadmill, 20 minutes, awesome, lifting weights, man. and feel the, feeling good. Good, good. 7,000 steps. That's it. That's the goal. We gotta 7, get the, steps. I got to get the tracker and see. Your phone has one on it. You've got an Apple. That's not accurate. Yes, it's it in is your pocket. Good. It's, it's on your good. table. I, is it grabbing steps in my couch cushion here? <laughs> yeah. When we walk over there, we're getting like 10 steps. Stop. And things going to be ding, 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 ding. <laughs> anyway, 7,000 steps. Great Let me lower there. the bar. We're all yeah. in now. <laughs> this Sunday coming up, Mother's Day, of course. So beautiful. Love on your mother. Love on somebody at church. Bring it to grandmother, church. Grandmother, another mother. But yeah, absolutely honor our mothers this Sunday. Do something special and for spiritual them. moms. Yes. Oh, absolutely. That was important. Spiritual mothers. We do have a CTN spotlight we wanted to focus on. What's CTN doing around the country? What are we doing in the community? Of course, National Day of Prayer, we're gonna be involved in those, but here locally in the Tampa market, we're doing something called Walk for Life. And this is amazing. You can see there, we're one of the major sponsors of this, along with, look at all those in the community. There are some great local corporate sponsors that are participating in this, and that's gonna be Saturday, May 7th, Walk what for is Life. It? Wait, what is this? Walk for Life is New Life Solutions, and we've actually got their website. Um, New Life Solutions is a local um, project that helps. Here, I'll, I'll, let me read their mission statement for you. Our mission. No, but I mean, are we walking? Is that yeah, what it's actually okay. a walking? Gotcha. And you know, you get donations yeah, and yeah, things no, to help fine. support them. Our mission is to protect the unborn, share the gospel, transform our communities one life at <sighs> a time. Love that. Good so, stuff. Yeah, they'll take care of, of uh, unwed mothers, take care of the you know, young mothers, take care of the babies, take yeah. care of the mothers. So amazing, amazing group. And there's one in every community, so you know, sure. go search, search them out. Please, I love it. Please help support them. So if you're in the Tampa area, go to New Life Solutions Walk for Life webpage. You can donate. You can come out to the event. Great um, cause. Yeah, it's fantastic, fantastic cause. Get so, your 7,000 steps in. Yeah, hey, get more than that that day. <laughs> All right, our good news for today, this might be one of my favorite stories that we've done in a long time. Of course, we're always looking at sports and looking at athletes. And uh, Stephen, we always talk about Stephen, our producer, but uh, Stephen does a great job of helping us produce the show and find all these things. Look at this. He found this Arizona Diamondbacks pitcher, Luke Weaver, puts his faith on display with his Bible glove. And here's what Luke had to say about it. It's just a way where I want to be able to show the world that in the midst of the battle and the competition and the personality expression, this is what I choose to do. His baseball glove That's looks cool. like a Bible. Look at this. So you can see on the left-hand side there, the outside, it's got Holy Bible. There's a little cross above on the finger seam there. And then on the inside, of course, he's got a cross with some thorns. And then he has three different scriptures on the inside. He's got um, Matthew, wow. what is impossible with man is possible with God. He's got Philippians, 1 Corinthians. and So he's a pitcher. So you imagine he's facing the batter. He's looking into his glove. Oh, I need some uh, spiritual... Uh, insight here. It sounds like now they got the website. Oh yeah, so, yeah. so if you want your, yeah, <laughs> buy now your glove at aria.com. Great idea though. Yeah, isn't that cool. fantastic? I love, man, I would have worn one of those right. back in the day. So good stuff there. Great news Bible. I'm great news. <laughs> good news about the Bible. I'm so far ahead of myself. All right, we've got something really special coming up. That's actually tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow the official yes, launch? launch day. Yes, officially. May 3rd. Come on. Here you go. Pastor's devotional, we've been talking about it for weeks and months. It's here. It premieres tomorrow. Go to Amazon, get your copy. Um, but we have ours today. And it, it, we always talk about devotionals. It just goes day by day. You open so up cool. for that day, read what's going on, get inspired for the day. So I encourage you to listen to his podcast, of course, but then get the devotional. You know, when I first got born again, um, I, I read My Utmost for His Highest. Yeah. I loved it. And I've all Oswald Chambers. Right. And I love devotion. I love the idea of like waking up in the morning, spending time with the Lord. And so I think definitely it's going to be a blessing to whoever gets it. Well, there you go. There's a look. Well, let's go over and talk about it. What pictures are incredible pictures. Where'd well, you yeah. get these? I don't know. You sent them to me. That's awesome. <laughs> My marketing department <laughs> did good. <laughs> Your marketing, Broad Street Publishing or somebody sent wow. those over. Wow. Isn't that nice? Are we going to use the chairs for the second time ever? Yeah, with Lori not here, we don't need the table. There's only two of us. Look at us. We're okay. like. Even though they're what I do with my coffee. I can't put it on the. Oh, yeah, this is weird. The floor. Right there, right there. My happy good morning. The, we uh, need a little arm. end table now. Yeah, true. Got to redo the set. All I can hear is your wife tell me to sit up straight <laughs> in these chairs. <laughs> we miss you, honey, by the way. Um, 
Engage in Heaven today. Yes, devotional. Amazing, amazing. Um, are we going through today's devotional? We are. Look at that. I've got my cursor. This is my little, awesome. Got my ribbon right on May 2nd. The title is This is War. Okay, well, I don't know. Here we go. We're doing devotional. Still young? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> so, so if you see the pattern here on the screen, every day is going to be a scripture, a thought, and then a question to answer and ask yourself to ponder. Today's devotional, This is War. The scripture is Matthew 12, 30. It says, He who is not with me is against me, and he that does not gather with me scatters abroad. That's Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. Here's what I wrote. It's funny because I, I did the audio book on this mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm doing it again. <laughs> do you think you're going to get, <clears throat> do you think you're going to get a free run up the mountain? Life doesn't work like that. If you're living without any attack, it's because you're not doing anything to threaten the kingdom of darkness. We are in a war. If you're not a threatening soldier, you won't see the attacks others are enduring. You won't feel the same sort of pressure if you're are ex you won't feel the same sort of pressure if you're experiencing attacks and pressure. Remember that the devil has already been defeated and you've been given the power to overcome anything that comes at you. Don't focus too much on the battle. Instead, focus on exercising your power and authority to overcome. You are more powerful than you'll ever believe that you are. And the devil knows it. Jesus is not on this earth healing people and preaching the good news anymore. He left that to us. Of course, the enemy isn't going to like you continue in the work of Christ. But that doesn't mean you should stop. Have courage. God is with you every step of the way. Man, Engaging heaven, how are you continuing the work of Christ? That is good. You know, I remember the thought I had when I, when I uh, did the, you know, this was based off my podcast. Mm -hmm. Remember the thought was persecution. So Jesus said we would be persecuted, right? So it's not an if. People don't like feeling uncomfortable. Well, what if they're persecuting me? Jesus said you will have persecution. Matter of fact, he told Peter, you're going to get a hundredfold in this life and the one to come with persecution. So as a Christian, we have to be comfortable with persecution. You know, maybe somebody's coming against you at your job, especially when it's faith oriented. They did it to Jesus. They'll do it to you. But what I thought about was this persecution and martyrs are connected. It's a message that ultimately you may be in a position you'd have to give your life for, right? I mean, ultimately, that's what we believe. But here was a thought I had one day. Why, why, aren't, many, why aren't as many people being persecuted today? And why aren't there as many martyrs today? And what dawned on me was we just don't have a message worth persecuting. Wow. And so we have to realize that this is war. Like, we're living in a day where, where there's a war on values right now. Yeah. There, if you believe in, I don't know, same-sex marriage, if, you, if you're pro-life, if you believe in Christian values, you are under attack right now. Mm -hmm. So you can't, if you're just looking for peace, you can't have that if you really believe the Bible. Right. Not that we're looking for a fight, you know, but, you know, it, it's what I said the other day. We, I remember go, I was in Orlando and there was like this all souls meeting where, you know, there's, it, it, you know, there's like different sexual preferences, transgenders, all these different beliefs spiritually. It was like, uh, it was a gong show. <laughs> and I'm standing outside of this all souls, kind of like interfaith, whatever just goes meeting. And it dawned on me, why is everybody's crazy okay, but not my crazy? Right. And that was the moment I said, you know what? If they're gonna actually get me to think that you were born a man and you feel like you're a woman, then I, you're gonna believe that God can raise the dead. Come on. You're gonna believe Jesus can save, deliver, and heal. And there was a boldness that came on me, not for conflict, not to cause problems, right. but to be confident in what we know is true. The message of the gospel works, mm -hmm. and we can't, you know, we can't run from being uncomfortable or talked about or persecuted. Then you tell me that there's people running around there that they, that they try to manifest what they call like their spirit animal. Oh, so like, weird. Oh, I'm a bear. I'm yeah. a what? I'm a whale. I'm yeah, just I'm a whale. <laughs> it's on, like, on land, walking I around. I feel like a festival. manatee. I'm endangered. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. <clears throat> but, you know, it's just a reminder that, you know, we have to be, if there was ever a day where the church, meaning the body of Christ, needs to speak, it's today. Yeah. That we need to declare God's word and realize that we have to be aware that we're in a war. You were born in a war that we've already been given victory over. Mm -hmm. And so my confidence is that our father's with us and we are going to see a great awakening. It's, Absolutely. It's kind of like right now you, you, you look and there's like, like there's so many different 
conflicting reports by believers on what's going to happen, right? It broke my heart a couple weeks ago. There's articles from well-named spirit-filled publications that's basically the headlines read that America is over. Basically, mm. it's reached its end. That's completely false. You need to realize that we are born in a war that we win. And so the lie is, oh, things aren't going to go well. It's not true. We are going to see a great awakening. God's going to win souls and touch lives like never before. And you've got to answer the question, where do you want to be in the battle? Right? The Bible says that if you're on the front lines of battle, you don't consume yourself with the affairs of this world. What are you focused on? What are you locked in on? And we've got to be men and women right now that, that are enlisting again, saying yes, realizing there's a, there is a great awakening for us to experience. And if, if, we're, if we're running from war and you want to play Christianity safe, it's not going to work out well for you. Well, yeah, so people are saying America's over as we know it, yet we've got National Day of Prayer coming up in just a couple of days. You've got the entire nation getting exactly. together to pray. What are you talking about America's over? Are you kidding me? That power of prayer Absolutely. is going to bring about Absolutely. the revival, the things that we need Absolutely. here in America. I mean, so anyway, yeah. Oh, I, just, I mean, uh, I mean, so look, go back, go back to your health, right? So, when you told me seven thousand steps a day could 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 double, you know, double our life expectancy or hinder fifty percent of us ending early, that gave me hope, mm -hmm. right? That's a message that makes all of us go, I can walk. Like you're not even telling me to run. You're telling me to walk right. 7,000 miles. That gives me hope awesome. for health. If you tell me prophetically America's finished, dude, you're not going to you're going to want to not have hope. Yeah. And the thing with faith most people don't understand is faith has to be rooted in hope. My health, faith for my health was rooted in hope. Wow. You're telling That's me good. just do 7,000 steps, James. Mike came last week to the church. He said just go to the gym. That encourage, if you told me there's no hope, you got a disease, no one could ever cure you, you've made a mistake, you're too overweight, how would you ever, how would I ever feel like I can do it? So it's the same thing in faith. Don't listen to people that are telling you America's finished. America is not finished. Come on. God is going to move in this land more than you could ever imagine in the days ahead, and he wants to use you. But that 7,000 steps analogy is so powerful because how are we going to approach a day of prayer when we feel like America's finished? You're going to literally not want to pray. You're not going to want to lift your head up. It's going to be more like escape prayers, like we're in the 80s and 90s, not wanting to be left behind. You cannot have a victorious church when we've bought into a lie that we're finished. Right. And so, you know, hope is going to fuel faith. And, 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 and really, I mean, what we believe about the end times is going to determine our fruit. You know, if we think it's over and we're doomed and there's no hope and... Dr. Brian Simmons went to the jungle for 15 years. When you ask him why, it's because he read a scripture that said everybody is going to hear the gospel before the Lord comes. He felt burdened to sit there and he prayed with his wife and said, where are the darkest places on the planet? I want to go and usher in the Lord. If he believed that we were done as a nation or a country or the world, he would never give his life for the gospel. So how some of y'all, let me just tell you right now, you need to shut off the garbage. You need to Come shut down. It. The, the false prophetic words and all the, the stuff going on around there. And you need to lock yourself into hope, Bible-believing hope, because God is going to do some miracles. Amazing, amazing. Man, I don't mean to preach. Come I'm on, hey, now. take it over. <laughs> <laughs> How appropriate you're doing that. Look at the jacket Pastor has on today. <laughs> Come on. Ah, God bless go. the USA. <laughs> Wearing his American flag and then we break into this conversation. And I would encourage you out there, listen to the voice of God. Listen to, of course, Pastor's podcast to get encouraged in the morning. Read the devotional. Get encouraged in, in your faith. That's what faith's all about. And then listen to the word of the Lord. Listen to what the Lord is telling you. He's not telling you America's defeated. He's telling you to go out and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He's Amen. telling you to go witness the, the miracles of God and to, to witness your faith. I mean, think about it. If, if the Lord told us, you know what, you want to take that city, let's say, I don't know, let's say the city's called Jericho. I want you to just march around 7,000 steps. I want, right, <laughs> I want you on. to march around the outside. You're going to go, what? How do I take a city by marching around? The, I'm just going to, okay, just march. Yeah, that was your instruction. Just march. Just walk. No, it doesn't make sense. But in your faith, you're just going to do what the Lord tells you. I'm just going to march around. That wasn't, what do you do? What happens? Anyway, you know the story. The walls crumble. They take over the city with uh, basically no battle at all just by marching and, and obeying the word of the Lord. So be faithful. If you think about war, like, I mean, obviously we've been praying this never-ending conflict between Ukraine. Mm -hmm. The... the uh, actually, I had a pastor I talked to this morning on the phone tell me that they were in Kiev doing meetings wow. and bombs are going off. 
And the Lord said, just as the smoke is filling Ukraine, it's going to be a glory filled Ukraine, which will be a glory filled Europe. Wow. And, the, and the Lord spoke to me, we're going to see a glory filled New England, a glory filled America and a glory filled Florida. Awesome. I mean, I just, I actually called myself, bro, I got to use that because I felt it, you know, and it's like what, what we believe is going to matter. And we have to, you know, this is really an hour of, of really just saying, God, I'm in. What do you want me to do? I know you want to fill this land with your glory. And I want to give you an opportunity to do that because our response, our yes is really all we have. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's what the Lord's requiring of us. Well, I love in the end of your devotional, you just read, <clears throat> we win. Totally. Hello, we win in the end. Read right. the end of the book. <laughs> Remind right. the enemy anytime you get persecuted. Remind them of the end of the book. Oh, yeah, by the way, we win. I know I'm under attack or whatever's happening, but hey, guess what? We win. You walk differently when you know you're going to win. Yes. You talk differently when you know you're going to win. Um, I know we talked about it recently because you know, I love sports analogies, but if I know we're going to win the Super Bowl, I'm going to practice differently. I'm yes, going to work yes. out differently. I'm going to plan differently. When you know you win, everything changes, and that's where your faith is. It's so much easier to know, hey, I'm going to win, so what? I get beat up a little bit. But I know I win in the right, end, and that's right. all that matters. And that's what Pastor's saying about the revival in America and in the Ukraine and all these places. We know we win, so we've got to be bolder about sharing our faith, about about uh, going to the festivals of the crazies and loving on them. They're they're just they're lost. Right. They just don't know. They're searching. When you think you're a manatee or a walrus or a whale or whatever, it is, you're just a little confused totally. about you know your your where your faith is. But if you have enough faith to believe that, man, can you imagine if they get filled with the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. If they have an encounter with Jesus, or they have Absolutely. an encounter with the love of God, that passion they have for being a manatee or a walrus, man, that passion toward Christ, the truth, and not Absolutely. some craziness, <clears throat> that passion for the truth is going to radically change their life. It's going to change their friends' lives. It's going to change their circle of friends' lives. It's going to change their family's lives. It's going to change everything. So share that love. You don't want to persecute Absolutely. them. Tell them you're an idiot for thinking you're a manatee. No, no, no. You know what? Let me just tell you about what true love is. Speaking of their belief, identity releases destiny. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage you today as you read the word that God would show you your identity, show you what you've been given so we can live differently. You know, it's not Christian can't just be a, a name. It has to be the function of us wanting to be in this journey to be like Jesus. So, Father, I pray for every person right now watching that they would step into your identity, that they would see you for who you are. And I pray that that our eyes would be open to the reality of you and the hope filled, glory filled America in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hope filled, glory filled. I Come love on. that. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed that. Get Pastor's devotional. It's amazing. We always pray for you at the end with 3 John 1, 2, beloved. I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. God bless you guys. Love you. See ya.